everybody, Morgan with the Vinancer here, and today I want to show you how to put together this modern hexagon centerpiece. Not only am I going to show you how to build the hexagon, but also how to do the floral arrangement inside. So follow along and I'll show you how to do this. I ran out to my local hardware store to pick some 1x4 boards, and when you're at the store and you're looking at the boards, make sure you look down the side of the board to make sure that it's not warped or twisted. The angles on this project are really important and you don't want to get a board that's super warped because that can affect uh, your final look. So don't cheap out on your wood selection. I ended up getting the nicest pine that my store had. You could always go to a hardwood um, that would help finding really nice straight pieces, um, but there is a price associated with that. So pick the nicest board you can. I'm going to grab a couple of these because I found I could get two and a half hexagons out of one eight foot board. So to complete my whole look, I'm going to grab a couple of those, throw them in the car and head on back to the workshop. The most important thing you're going to do for this entire project is setting your miter saw to 30 degrees and making sure that that is super accurate. Uh, I actually made my first one, got it all assembled, and realized that I was off by just a hair, um, and that did make some gaps in my angles, so make sure you take the appropriate amount of time to set the angle on your saw and make sure that's true. I'm just going to cut off the end of my first 8 foot board to get that 30 degree angle on it, and then I'm going to flip it over. And I've set up a stop block here on this side to seven and a half inches. So from the longest point to the longest point on the board, it's going to be seven and a half inches. And I would highly recommend using a stop block because that's going to give you really consistent cuts as you build your hexagon. So in total, the hexagon, once it's assembled, will stand about 12 inches tall when you're using the seven and a half inches on the long side here. So once you get it cut, that's what it looks like on the end. And I'm going to make six of these uh, and then head over to the sander and I'm going to sand the inside which was the short side of these boards because I won't be able to sand this once I glue it all together. So I'm going to pre-sand that and then lay out a bunch of masking tape. Now I just have one inch masking tape on hand so I'm going to lay two of these so that the sticky side is up. If you've got the wider masking tape you could just do one strip um, but what I'm going to do is tape this down to the table and then put my wood pieces directly on top of the tape and the tape is going to act as my clamp when I go to glue this. So I'm going to lay this down square onto the tape and then press it down so it gets some good adhesion and then grab the next piece and butt it up right against the previous one making sure that the sides are aligned and there's no gap between those pieces of wood. And then just do this for all six pieces and then we're going to bust out the glue. I'm using some indoor wood glue on both sides of all my joints and just going to apply a generous amount and then come back and spread it out using a foam brush and just make sure that you get good coverage through the entire surface of that joint and you want to do this in every groove and the ends. Don't forget those ends because those will be glued together eventually too. Then I'm just going to pick up the ends of the tape and slowly start rotating my hexagon together. I'm just checking those joints to make sure the edges are aligned and I'm just going to bring it up until my last two sides meet. And once I've got those together and they're nice and tight, uh, I'm just going to lay it down so you can see here. Make sure those are nice and tight and then secure the tails of the tape down to the other board and that'll hold everything in place while the glue dries. And I'm just going to press down on it, make sure everything is nice and level and then come back to all the joints, especially on the inside, and wipe away any glue squeeze out, because uh, it'll be hard to clean that up later. And then just set the piece aside to dry. I let mine go overnight, and then I'm gonna pull all the masking tape off and do a little finish work. So you know how in the beginning I mentioned that my angles weren't quite right? So here you can see where there's a gap, um, but that's not the end of the world. This piece is totally salvageable. I've got a little bit of wood putty here and I'm just going to fill in that gap. Um, and then once I sand this away, you won't even be able to see it. So I'm going to go around all the outside edges and just double check for any gaps. And then I'll also do it on the front face of the hexagon as well. So apply that and then we'll set it aside for 15 minutes to dry and then come back and sand it. Now I'm not only sanding away the putty that I applied, but also the entire piece. So both the front and the back and all of the sides on the outer perimeter of the hexagon. This is a really easy project to batch out and make a bunch of. So if you're throwing a wedding or a special event where you need a lot of these, they can be batched out in a small amount of time. The finished hexagon stands a little bit taller than 12 inches and today I'm going to be filling it with some silk flowers. So I have my wire snippers here. 
I've got some floral foam, so if you'd like to assemble yours into foam, you could totally do that. But today, I'm going to be using chenille stems to secure my flowers instead of the foam. And I just have an assortment here of greens, so some eucalyptus, some mixed greens, um, two picks of each. And then I have one bush of an assorted dusty pink rose set that I got uh, at a craft store. And I'm just going to start off by taking my wire snippers and cutting free all of the rose pieces from the bush and leaving a nice long stem because that means they're reusable for a later project. So first of all, I'm going to take my greenery and put a 90 degree bend right in it so that the, my greenery will stand up and be really fluffy. Um, but that bend is going to make it so it'll stand on the inside of my hexagon. So I'm going to take all of my greens with a 90 degree bend in it and attach those really tightly together using a chenille stem. And then I'll place it on the inside of the hexagon so that half of this is poking out on either side of the hexagon. And then it's just a matter of fluffing up all of the greenery. So I'm going to mix it around so that the eucalyptus is mixed in with the other greens and I kind of um, have a nice fluffy sphere that I can insert the flowers into. Next I'll insert my focal flower, which is the roses, and I'm just bending the stems on those so that they'll sit just outside of that range of the, the greenery, and some of it will nestle in, some of it will have standing out, and you just want to spread them around so that they're evenly distributed and make sure you've got some on both sides, because assuming this centerpiece is going to be seen in the middle of a table, you would want it to look nice from all angles. And then once I get all of those roses put in, I have these um, spiky flowers that I'm going to have poking up um, a little higher out of the arrangement, and that'll give it some nice textural differences. And the bush had its own leaves that I'll insert anywhere where it seems like there's a little bit of a gap. And that's all there is to this. You know, it's really easy to put together an arrangement like this. As long as you've got some fluffy greens, some nice focal flowers, you can put this together really simply and quickly. inspired by today's project. I just love the modern and clean look that this buff wood gives in the hexagon shape. And you could do this for a wedding or a special event or even a party to spruce up a centerpiece. It doesn't take a lot of time. With just a few woodworking tools, you can make these pretty easily. And the flower arrangements come together really quickly. If you enjoyed this, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to have you join our creative community as I make all kinds of event props and decorations as well as tips and how-tos on party planning. And if you loved the hexagon, stay tuned because I'm going to be making a full-on honeycomb wall out of hexagons just like this. So until then, check out some of the videos over here and stay creative!